some good news uh, about the, the state of the Nigerian economy. It's been a struggling trend for the economy for the past month, as we see some of the indices that are not looking so good, especially as it affects the average person. Um, tonight, we'll be getting some perspectives. If you look at the price of commodities generally, uh, those who even ask the question, yes, the Nigerian Naira is not doing well against the dollar, but how did it affect some products that, are not, uh, that doesn't have anything to do with the dollar? Well, dollars seem to be affecting about everything. Uh, I don't feel so much air in the atmosphere. Uh, and jokingly, I told a friend, whether the dollar is also affecting the air that we bring, it, it seems so much that the humidity is still feeling different uh, these days. But, well, there's some good news. The dollar is, uh, the Naira is doing well in the last few days. The report that we're getting, the CBN today says that the Naira continued to record gains in the autonomous foreign exchange market. It traded about 1,300 naira to the dollar as against 1,611 uh, against the dollar in the second week of March. And the CBN has told Nigerians that there's been an inflow of over 1.5 billion US dollars in the past few days. Uh, the CBN, according to some of the uh, information pushed out earlier today, uh, made uh, the allusion that uh, the data available to the bank indicates that inflows uh, resulted from a concerted effort to stabilize the foreign exchange market. What does this inflow mean? If 1.5 billion US uh, foreign exchange inflow is recorded into the Nigerian economy system, how much of impact can that be? Then the PCBN, a uh, few days after the, uh, the monetary policy uh, committee met, and brought out is uh, two consecutive meetings now, the first and the second. Interest rates were increased. Now, it came out and dropped the bombshell on Nigerian banks, commercial banks, merchant banks, non-interest banks. They've been hit with a new policy to say, you have to go and check your capital base and increase it. But it gave them two years to do that. We'll be giving you the details and the table in a short while. But let's get a sense of it. Tonight, I'm not going to be boring you with the numbers and uh, the indicators and uh, economic terminologies, but I've got my guest, uh, uh, a friend here on China Salvation, who helps us to break down some of these issues. Paul Alaji is the chief economist at SPM uh, 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 company. He joins us live from Ibadan. Thank you so much, Mr. Alaji, for joining us tonight on the program. First and foremost, let's get yeah, started. Thank you so very much. How much of thank a you so very much for having me. Thank you so much indeed. How much of a good news is this 1.5 billion uh, foreign exchange inflow into the Nigerian economy? First and foremost, break it down for us. Well, what does this mean? Is good. What does this I mean? I will tell you that it's good. What does the inflow mean? I will tell you it's good. Yeah. It means, it, I will also tell you what that means. First of all, it's good. It means that we have increased supply. That is inflow of USD into our country by at least $1.5 billion. And the truth is that we can even do more. Of the seven points that we have mentioned to government via the media and also write-ups that government could adopt, clearly, Three of these policies have been adopted under the new central bank governor, and perhaps that is why we are seeing this result. So the implication is government Naira now has some level of stability. Not so much. It's still really very fragile. And I can tell you that we cannot say we have huge confidence on this. It's like working on eggshell for now. And I believe that if we are consistent and we, have the, we become audacious to follow through all the policies, Without hurting the economy badly, we will certainly see more inflow, and that can bring, I mean, that can take dollar down and even bring Naira further up. But whether we're going to have the requirement to do all of this is a different conversation. And I'll quickly tell you one of the things Central Bank has done. Before now, when people get remittances from abroad, they get it in dollar. Not all, some of them will take the money to the parallel market, which seems to be more attractive. And when they get such money, it does not leave the parallel market. And the interplay doesn't get find its way back to the banking sector. How much? Well, how do we determine what is our foreign reserve? It's not the money that is out of the banking sector. It is the money that is within the control of central bank, and the bank central bank controls that we can that will help us determine what we have in our foreign reserve. But unfortunately, the strategy before now would have been to either fight the BDCs. But what central bank has now done would be that if you have foreign remittance or you are even paying money to the government, that money will stay with central bank, and the Naira equivalent is what will be released. 
And we talk of this with other activities. We have seen that more money is now being, I mean, staying or being trapped to the central bank for lack of uh, the right word. I would say now stays with the central bank. We can now capture what actually is a true inflow into our economy. One of the reasons is that it is better to get such money from the uh, honey window or from FNBQ rather than going to parallel market. Today, the parallel market traded for 1,280. Uh, but when you check, I remember when I had an interview with you because some of these policies were implemented, were projected to get to 1,500 by March and it surpassed for federal government and indeed the central bank has now knows that we are dealing with a bigger issue. First thing that was done was to solve the NNPC for collecting uh, revenue on behalf of government. Because, of course, NNPC is not a bank. So we have a bank of government, in this case, Central Bank, to say all our currency, and in fact, all other currency must come to the vote of Central Bank. All of these things add up. But Central Bank cannot, must also release the NERA equivalent, which is really not our problem. It's a problem, but not our problem. But right now, what we need is that that is happening. Central Bank has also increased interest rate. Even though that is a two-edged sword, if I have time, I will explain the implications. What that means, again, is that foreign investors can come to Nigeria, especially portfolio investors, and bring in their money. That will also will be, be, will be account for a sudden increase. We are seeing about $1.5 billion. So, but how much of all of these can we see of the seven important policy that must be implemented for us to see stability in the medium term? We are beginning to see some level of improvement. I cannot call it stability yet. Some level of improvement in the short term. Whether or not we may have the will to push this further, it's a different kettle of fish. So that is the implication. Supply side is increasing. I've also mentioned three reasons why you're having this, among other reasons that could be accountable for this improvement. But we, in all of these, we should know that it's still really very fragile because there's still a lot of people speculating on Naira who are hoping that Naira will, will fall again. And I might also quickly uh, answer a question you asked in your intro. Why is it that in spite of all the prices at TI, uh, people that have nothing to do with the dollar, how come that they said dollar is affecting them? The truth is a corn seller who may not have imported the corn and even the charcoal to, to roast the corn, it might have not imported it. But you live in an economy where exchange rate is really poor, was weak, and also in an economy uh, where prices are really high. Inflation rate is over 31%. The central bank had projected it in the short term to increase to 32%, but it's still very hopeful that we come to 26%. But whether all of those will happen, it depends on policy, decisions, and our ability to combat food inflation, and more importantly, core inflation. Whether um, uh, the, the current strategy of increasing interest rate will be sufficient, it's another kettle of fish entirely it's interesting uh, you will see that there is a frantic effort by the cbn to really strangle inflation and uh, snuff life out of it and ensure that it uh, takes air out of it such that it doesn't really affect this economy you see those efforts that are being made and uh, you know economy is something that you need to be careful it's like a yo-yo. You touch it, it begins to jump up and down. So you have to be very, very deliberate and strategic because the reactions will have a ripples. Now, give us an understanding of um, a direct understanding of what implication the inflow will be to the average person, the woman who is selling corn on the on the street, and perhaps maybe it will lessen the pressure on the the uh, on the on the foreign exchange locally. Good. So what we are going to see in the next three to four months, I'm afraid we may not see this happen throughout the month of April, but maybe end of May, certainly June, July, if this persists, we will see that inflation will still grow, but at a reducing rate. So inflation will grow at a reducing rate. What that means is that for commodities that we, we buy on daily basis, we are going to see some level of improvement. Minute, though, they are going to be very uh, small at the at the start, but if we continue uh, to implement more policies that will not hurt the economy, and I am not rec I mean recommending to central bank to further tighten or to increase interest rate. I think the central bank. So it's important for me to put that on the table that central bank should watch the 600 basis point that has been uh, that has been uh, implemented that has been announced uh, in the last four weeks. It's important for us to watch that when it comes to May. Increasing it in May will be counterproductive. To what the central bank wants to achieve. Why? Because it will be anti-growth anti 
Two, it will crowd out investment, especially investment in real sector. And number three, it also crowd out employment. As it sits on a present the basis point, within a month, it's perhaps the largest this economy has seen in four decades. So I think we should stay with that so that we don't say a patient that has uh, uh, an infection that should take antibiotics uh, three times a day for seven days. We said we want you to be here very quickly. What we want to do is to combine all the dosage and put in a smart 21 tablets, hoping that this kidney will not pack up. We need to be careful not to bring a policy rush into the system. I am not saying that uh, the kind of policy we are implementing are wrong, but we are saying that it is not just that it's wrong. The reason why a lot of people don't want to take local medicine, quote and unquote, what people call a go, is because of what will be the right prescription. So the central bank must know when it is too much all the time, uh, they have to be sensitive to uh, when to introduce the policy. So here is it. There are a lot of effort going on by the central bank, no doubt. All the economics now know that the central bank is doing everything to combat inflation. But the advice I give the central bank at this one, you need to watch where some money supply is going to. Money supply is going more into public sector. When you look at the FAC account, over 300% increase in what goes to federal, state, and local government. And most of this money have not trickled down into the economy. Maybe again, Central Bank is trying to fight for upcoming minimum wage. And I've said definitely the minimum wage president will be announced by me will be more than a hundred thousand naira and it'll be less than two hundred thousand naira. It could be one it could be one fifty, it could be one fifty five, it could be one eighty, but it will be somewhere in between. And I oh. tell you that when this happens, you are going to see a sporadic jump in inflation. So oh. what will fiscal authority do to ensure that we don't unnecessarily uh raise inflation which would, of course, Central Bank will want to use monetary tool to correct in the coming period. So I can see the effort Central Bank is making. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, we also need to watch what National Bureau of Statistics is reporting. Bureau of Statistics is saying inflation is, 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 is the, the, the real cause of inflation or the, the main reason, the main driver of inflation is food inflation. How do we ensure we have food supply? For me, most of the problem we have in the Nigerian economy today, they are they can be solved using supply side strategy. Boost food supply, boost productivity, boost exports, and you are going to see more inflow into the economy. You are going to see that while supply demand remains the same, prices of commodity in the market will come down. Yeah, so, so you know this strategy is applicable when you really want to build a robust economy, an economy that will be resilient. But if you want to manage it just using few our tools within the power, I mean, within the power of classical economics, we may see some results in the short term, but in the long run, these may disappear and fizzle out completely. In, in one breath, do you think the Cardoso CBN is on the right track? Are they making the right decisions in the last days? Are you happy with what, uh, what they are doing just in a breath? Yeah, so to talk about some of the things you have done, I would say it's an improvement from what we had in the previous time. I can see an improvement. Uh, with what Mr. Cardoso is doing. So uh, for, for now, I think is on the right track. And areas where he was really aggressive, I've mentioned them, is about the rate. Improving bank uh, capital base, I think it's also the right thing to do. It is long overdue. And Mr. Cardoso became audacious in pulling this up. But the area of money which I must issue, because this we have, it will have a, a major effect on the economy, if we try to increase interest rate again. The numbers we are checking on the background is saying we need to take caution in increasing interest rate. We have done 600 basis points. It's high time we hold on and see what the impact will be within three to six months. All right. Uh, it's interesting. Let me take you to the issue of capitalization. Uh, my friend Shegun, uh, Shegun Igbinde, uh said that inflation is a very stubborn entity, but Cardoso is applying pressure from all ends Bank recapitalization is another pathway. Do you agree? Well, I completely agree with uh, uh, Mr. Shewonik Bide, who is also a friend, by the way. I agree with him. And when you look at the numbers, commercial bank that has international presence, 500 billion, national bank, uh, that's a commercial bank that with national spread, national license, 200 billion, regional bank, 50 billion, national, talking about uh, merchant bank, 50 billion, non-interest bank, 20, and even regional non-interest bank, will not be a student with another 10 billion requirement. What all, all of this mean? Central Bank is saying that we have a vision. The vision is to build $1 trillion economy. And let me quickly explain that. When Naira was devalued at official window, our economy came down from 
450 billion dollars to 320 billion dollars because at the end of the day we're not going to compare nigeria with lagos but we compare nigeria with ghana we we'll compare nigeria with saudi arabia we we'll compare nigeria with different countries of the world and which currency are we likely to use is the dollar the moment we say we now need more naira to exchange for one dollar what we have done is that the value of our economy that was what that was in naira when it convert to dollar term it will surely go down now, how do we boost this? It's supposed to put uh, confidence in the financial sector and put and make sure that our bank become more resilient. Perhaps this, this is what I've seen in this uh, policy that is issued. And anyone that wants to have new license by the central bank, starting from 1st of April, a number of days from now, 2024, we now need to comply with this. Those that have approval in principle, we also need to pay for the difference. All of this is saying we need banks to be strong. We want more capital projects to, to come into this system. Well, another question of which many people we ask is, at what interest rates are we going to do this? So that is why, as much as we are building on one hand, we should take a lot of caution not to destroy from the other. In your, in, in, in just uh, uh, to wrap up this conversation, um, good news, isn't it, for our economy? On good that news, for me, watch, good news. The last three weeks. Good news, good news. It's, it's huge good news. But the implementation, we have to take a lot of caution so that we don't destroy more business entity. But overall, I will tell you the truth. This is good news. I've been expecting this to happen three years ago. And I must say that I was quite happy when I saw that uh, decision by the central bank, at the, I think yesterday or so, when the, he, he made it to the news that it has now been announced. So for me, it's good news. The last time we saw a major milestone improvement like this was in 2004, when 31st December 2025 was issued as a deadline for banks, especially commercial banks, to uh, take that lead, lead step. So it's a bold step by uh, Mr. Yemi Kadosu, and it seems to hope that Nigeria Bank will, of course. And I can tell you, a lot of our banks we qualify, non-interest merchant, and, of course, commercial bank, both with the one with national and international uh, uh, and international presence. Yeah, I work with few of them, and I can tell you that most of these banks, we do that. And in all of this, it will make our economy to become resilient. Will it have implication on inflation? Yes, it will have implication on inflation. But we also need to let people know so that we don't, we don't hide our face you know, in, in, in monetary, in, this, in, 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 in the thin air of monetary policy. That there are things we must do for this economy to be sustainable mm. and for this economy not to be not 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 not, not to be destroyed uh, by by some other uh, some other issues that are uh -huh. not really connected to monetary uh, uh, monetary points. One is we need to solve the issue of insecurity, which of course is hindering food supply. Two, we also need to do a lot with uh, logistics and food uh, distribution, that is, which network, is important. And Mr. President and state government must stay clear uh, and understand that, yes, you may have a central bank government that is really agile and taking all decisions where we think it's not doing well, we have mm. said it. But yeah. overall, I would say that we give Mr. Cardoso, yeah. with some of these policies I've seen in recent days, seven out of ten. I yeah. would say he has really, really done well. That's it's a few mark. areas I yeah. think him and his team all we right. need to watch. In the but, but, but in all of this, uh, I, I need to go now, Paul. Uh, in all of this, is there a possibility because of this uh, capitalization policy, do you see some banks not being able to meet up and some kind of mergers or some, some kind of coming together that we have seen in the past years? when banks are not able to meet yeah. up their capitalization uh, 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 obligations? Yes, I think few banks, less than 20% of banks across board, uh, uh, across the three categories, may not be able to meet up. This is our uh, immediate report. This is our immediate observation that about 20% of the banks may not be able to meet up, but they will have options. One is to sell uh, the banks to those who want new investors. With that is why Central Bank is giving 24 calendar months for them to do that. Two, they could also merge with another financial institution that is robust. Three, even the banking halls and all of those may not be a waste at the end of the day because one bank with larger capacity may acquire or may match as the case may be, and you might see a stronger banking system in Nigeria. Because for you to have a robust economy, you certainly must build it on a strong foundation right. of a large banking system. And I think this is what I will be seeing in the coming period. Paul Olaje is an economist and the chief economist at the SPM Professionals. Thank you so much indeed for your time. And I appreciate you breaking it Thank down. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you.